The through hiker diet is probably the most extreme diet on the planet. You would have to eat five to 6,000 calories to not lose weight. Imagine eating like a sumo wrestler or a small elephant, not to gain weight, but just to try to not lose too much weight. So I ended up losing 9% of my body weight, but if we look just at the body fat, it went down by almost half. And spoiler alert, you'll probably still lose weight. This is the world of through hiking. One of the only activities in the world where eating an absurd amount of junk food isn't just acceptable, it's encouraged. Where burning 5,000 calories a day for months is the norm. A half gallon ice cream challenge could be your Saturday night in town. Seriously. But here's the thing, this diet is starting to change. Calories are still king, but many hikers and elite trail runners are rethinking the traditional thru-hiker diet. Tara Dower just broke the Appalachian Trail record for both men and women, and one major thing that was different between her and other record holders was her diet. In this video, we'll dive into the science of the thru-hiker diet and nutrition and explore what you should eat. And I'll try to boil it all down to two simple diet suggestions. Through hiking typically involves hiking 15 to 20 miles a day with a 30 pound backpack up and down mountains for months at a time. Going from a more sedentary couch life at home to an intense through hiking lifestyle is quite a shock to the system. After just a couple of weeks on trail, your body will go from burning roughly 2,000 calories a day to possibly well over 5,000 calories a day. There's a really crude estimate for how much it costs to walk, how much energy it costs to walk. It's about 100 calories a mile. And if it's on rugged terrain with a backpack, it's more than that. It's probably 150 or more calories. Now, this gets into bioenergetics and the study of the transformation of energy between a living organism and its environment. But basically, we take an energy, calories, and expend energy by burning those calories, just like a car takes in gas and consumes it. And if we only consume, say, 3,000 calories a day and burn, say, 5,000 calories a day, we can experience, you guessed it, weight loss, often more specifically, fat loss. Lay off me, I'm starving! And the main energy storage tissue is fat. So you start pumping calories out of the fat cells and into the bloodstream. This is Dr. Edward Weiss. Edward did a detailed assessment of his energy intake and expenditure for his 128 day through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail and made this fascinating case study on his findings. So energy intake overall was 4,100 calories per day. Energy expenditure was 5,700 calories per day. Day. And so you have 1600 calorie deficit. I ended up losing 9% of my body weight. But if we look just at the body fat, it went down by almost half. Yeah, his fat mass went down by 46%. Through hiking, America's most effective weight loss program. Now, weight loss might be considered a good thing for some of us. But there's a catch. If your energetic system operates in a caloric deficit and has taken all it can from fat, it'll look for energy elsewhere and ultimately start shutting down other systems. Yikes. This system shutdown is called relative energy deficiency in sport, and it can happen on a through hike. There are a lot of examples on this beyond just weight loss suppressed immune system, hormonal imbalances. One example are women when they stop having menstrual cycles. And this is just a sign of the body saying, hey, wait a minute, I don't really need to be reproductive. Get some more food back down the pie hole and then we can turn it back on and get on with reproduction. The point is this, your body is operating in crisis mode and requires a lot of energy on a through hike. And in order to prevent your systems from shutting down, you need to replenish that energy, which full circle now means a lot, and I mean a lot of calories, which can be tough to get enough. So through hikers have a simple solution to this problem, mainly by embracing this sort of human garbage can mentality, admittedly in a pretty fun way. You would have to eat five to 6,000 calories to not lose weight. That's a hard thing to do. Let's go! All sorts of eating contests like the dollar menu challenge where you would eat everything on McDonald's dollar menu. Rest in peace. And all of these quote, dumpster trail meals, like wrapping a Snickers in peanut butter and M&Ms and Fritos in a tortilla. When I through hiked, my go-to meal in town was a pint of Ben and Jerry's and a frozen pizza. I'd also scarf down a salad and an orange to make me feel a little less guilty. And look at the items in this old five-day meal plan of mine. Cheetos, a box of Fruit Loops, tuna packets, ramen, bottle of olive oil, a pepperoni stick, jar of peanut butter, honey buns, Mike and Ike's, cheese crackers, a brick of cheese, a trail mix, and a one-to-one -one bag mixture of oatmeal and brownie mix. Now, this was 
years ago, but a lot of hikers still eat like this. One way that people typically do this, which is, is you eat tons of junk food, right? Because it's cheap, it's lightweight, and it's totally packed with calories. But often those foods are pretty low in essential nutrients and protein. This standard through hiker diet has two big, big problems though. Hear me out. So calories come from three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Most hikers typically eat a carb heavy diet. Understandable, you need a lot of carbs, but you need a sufficient amount of all three of these. To keep it very high level, carbs provide your body with faster, more easily accessible energy. Fats provide longer stores of energy and protein helps with muscle repair. Many studies support adding protein to your carb intake helps substantially. Like this meta-analysis of 11 studies that found endurance athletes who combined carbs with protein performed 9% better than those with carb only especially when pushing to exhaustion. Or this meta-analysis of 1,162 participants concluded increased protein supplementation resulted in increased oxygen intake, peak workload power, and greater time trial performance. So a 5,000 calorie diet could look carb heavy like this, or it could look more balanced with protein and fat like this. Simply put, a diet with more balanced macros is more likely to fuel you better because it's not only about carbs. This brings me to the second problem, which is the bigger point I want to make. It's not just the quantity and balance of calories you need, but the quality. I'm not gonna lecture you on healthy eating, especially because there are so many heated opinions on vegan versus carnivore versus keto, blah, blah, blah. But one thing I will push for is minimally processed foods, which means less bad things in your food. Less processed foods are generally more likely to retain naturally occurring micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, but this is not the case for ultra processed foods. This is because processing strips away or degrades these nutrients. Again, many studies have been conducted on this, like this 2024 study from the American Society for Nutrition, which determined major vitamins and minerals like vitamin E were reduced by up to 72% and trace minerals were reduced by up to 64% in refined white flours compared to whole wheat flours. Not only that, processed foods also negatively impact your health because of the bad stuff that is added to it. And many studies have been done on this, like this 2021 study spanning over 21 countries, which concluded a higher rate of intake of processed meats, which are often loaded with preservatives, was associated with a higher risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease. Now, most trail foods are highly processed, like deli meats, white breads, and candy. Let's take a look at one of the thru-hiker diet's staple, ramen noodles. Compare its ingredient label to this more natural noodle label, which is just flour, salt, and water. Both provide a few hundred calories, but I'd much rather pick the more natural one. The more natural noodles are probably less likely to cause GI issues than the processed ramen, largely because they lack certain additives and preservatives that can irritate the digestive system. Speaking of, remember this viral video? A study had patients swallow processed ramen noodles and homemade ramen noodles and filmed their stomachs digesting them. The processed ramen was still causing the stomachs to contract, trying to digest it, over two hours later, gross. And a recent study from Baylor University concluded that eating instant noodles two to three times a week was linked to an increased risk in heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Eating more balanced nutritional diet combined with less processed foods on trail should mean longer energy, better digestion, better sleep, better recovery on your through hike and potentially less health risk in the long term. Now, clearly there's a spectrum here. We can't grill wild caught salmon with organic rice and asparagus every night. Although that'd be awesome. We need to accept some degree of imperfection with our trail food and enjoy some junk food. But I think a lot of hikers can do better. This idea is something I've been aware of for many years. And like I hinted at earlier, it hit home with me more when I spoke with Tara Dower after her recent AT record smash. When I asked her about how she was feeling post hike, she said, great. I was kind of shocked. Other record holders have reported being wrecked post hike. Tara thinks she bounced back so quickly because unlike most FKT record holders, she actually ate really well. Possibly the best any FKT holder, usually eating freshly cooked meals from the van and protein shakes. It's quality and it was a lot. I ate around eight to 10,000 calories a day and I really encouraged my crew to get as many fresh foods as possible. You heard it here folks, if you wanna perform and recover, you gotta eat right. Now you might be saying eating healthy on trail is super hard. It's often more expensive, less available, and might require more planning and things like mail drops. 
I totally get it, but again, I think we can still improve the current standard throughout your diet, or at least do better than I used to do. I still think there are a lot of pretty good mentally processed trail food options. Now, this list is not perfect, and a lot of these get pretty nuanced, but I think this is a solid starter list. Comment if you can think of some more. I'm gonna try to move through these quickly, but for protein, clean jerky, tuna packets, quinoa, cold soak, dried beans, lentils, protein powders, also pork rinds is a favorite of mine. For fats, we've got nuts, seeds, and nut butters, olive oil, coconut oil. For carbs, we've got oats, rice, minimally processed noodles, Shout out to rice noodles. I'd also say some natural potato and corn chips. For veggies, we've got dried veggies, dried mushrooms, seaweed. For other trail food items, we've got dehydrated meals, at least some of them. Bars, shout out to my green belly meal babies. And we have a new protein meal out that is delish. Treats, we got dried fruit, fruit leathers, dark chocolate, tea, and coffee. Also, most through hikers bench on pizza and ice cream in town. Some of that is fine, of course, but this is kind of a missed opportunity. Use trail towns to catch up on fresh meats and fruits and veggies. So in summary, it's not about perfection. However, I do urge you to think a little bit more about your trail diet with these two main points. One, a balanced macronutritional profile for things like carbs, protein, and fat and two, minimally processed foods. Your body is going through a lot on a through hike, so give it some love. You will be more likely to feel better, get sick less, recover faster, and have a better hike overall. We've got another video about how hiking literally changes your body. We break down some more of Ted's data, so give us a subscribe if you wanna see that one, or a like, or don't, that's fine. It's coming out anyways. A big thanks to Ted and Tom for their interviews and help making this video, and our small team who helps edit, film, and design these. I'm Chris Cage, founder of Green Belly Meals, signing off. Peace.